Well, we're here on a beautiful day at the <laughs> Royal Hills in Yaclov. I'm here with Simon. He's involved with the CPS. Uh, not a great day to be out on the boat, but it is a decent day to be talking about boat safety. What does CPS stand for? Canadian Power and Sail Squadron. We're a, we're a group of uh, volunteers, been around for about 85 years, started in Windsor, Ontario. We teach boating safety, navigation, um, your regulatory stuff like your pleasure craft operator card, your VHF, um, which is your radio license, which is a regulatory requirement. Uh, basic safety, and then we get into navigation, um, how to handle a boat on the water, kind of the um, required equipment. Mm -hmm. So if someone is brand new to boating, do they come to you first? They can. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of places do an online PCOC course, but we also, we offer that as well. You can start with us doing that, and then it gets into boat, what is called boating two and three, which teaches you how to look at what a buoy is out on the water, the rules of the road, uh, collision regulations. Um, like, why is boating safety so important? Like, why do people have to take all these Because courses? unlike a driver's license, yeah. once you get your operator's card, which is basically just taking an online course and answering a few questions, you don't have any competency. First time you got into a car. Brett, you thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you take your kids to driver's training all of the course. time, right? Yeah. Well, we, you need to learn how to actually handle a boat. It's not as simple as just point and go. Well, right. I mean, when you're coming onto another vessel, which way do you go? Do you go to the right or the left? I would always think to the right. Generally, you're right. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, it's like the general rule of passing if you're on a sidewalk. Same but there thing. are there are different rules when a sailboat's crossing in front of you. Who oh, has right of guess, way? Yeah. Who's under power? Is a sailboat a power boat at some point in time? Which right. yes, it is. Um, there's very there's a lot of rules out there that a lot of people don't know. They also don't know what those little markers mean. Okay. Well, coming up, we are going to be talking about some of those rules. We'll talk about some of the safety equipment that you see here. There is a lot more coming up on a very rainy morning on <laughs> Morning Live. It is time to talk about basic boating skills. We are now into the beginning of summer. A lot of people are getting out on the water. A lot of people that probably don't have a lot of experience out on the water. I know since COVID, boating kind of took off, right? It did. Yeah, a lot of people want to get out on the water and try something new. Yeah, tons of people couldn't go on vacation anymore. They yeah. were stuck at home and say, hey, yeah, I'll go buy a boat. Sounds yeah. like a really good idea. But then they don't know how to use the boat. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so how do we get them to learn their basic boating skills? Well, you can sign up for a boating two and three course, which will teach you um, kind of what you need to have on a boat. Various safety equipment, like your PFDs, mm -hmm. um, flares. How, yeah. many, how many do you need? How many do you need? Well, it all depends on the size of the I vessel. I would think of the more, the merrier, like, well, just that's in a, case. Yeah, but these things do expire after five years. And they're and, probably not cheap. And they, they are not. I yeah. mean, this one, this kit with the gun now is probably running you 120? Yeah, about that, 120. We got Ray in the background helping yeah, us out. Yeah, Ray's <laughs> giving me the price. I haven't bought my, I haven't bought a whole kit in a number of years. I just yeah. buy the, the shells themselves. But they will call, they'll, they'll run you $120. Yeah, now, so. That said, every one of these things that you're missing on your vessel, mm -hmm. if the police pull you over on the water, Is it's it a, a $250 fine per thing. So <laughs> you don't have a sounding device. Gosh, do I ever want to, mm, okay. and I can't, I'm okay. not allowed. You don't have a sounding device, Luke $250. Will let me. <laughs> you, you have a flashlight and a floating one at that, okay. but. It doesn't work. If it doesn't work, $250. Just for a battery in your flashlight? Yes, ma'am. What? <laughs> Not the right amount of flares or expired flares. Let's talk about that for a second. You see here, you've oh, got dates on them. Oh, that's expires. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's expires. <laughs> Did you get these out of your boat, Ray? <laughs> Everything else is good. <laughs> Um, it's just an example of what happens and where the date is and, and how easily you can get yourself in a lot of trouble and owe a lot of money. A lot, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In a really short period of time. Yes. Wow. Okay, so life jacket, what is this? That's a reboarding device. See, now I called it a ladder and I'm not allowed to call it. See, Ray's loud again. <laughs> I'm not allowed to call it a ladder. Why not? Well, yeah, Transport Canada calls them reboarding devices. Right, sorry, and, Transport and Canada. And it doesn't necessarily have to be this fancy little thing. You can actually tie a rope off of two cleats in a certain dip, and that can be used as a reboarding. 
onboarding device as well. So okay. there are little tricks that we can teach you along the way. Well, yeah, so that's why CPS is so good because they can probably end up saving you money in the long run by saying, listen, you don't need to get a fancy reboarding uh, device like this. You can do other things, but these are the necessities that you need any kind of boat that you take out, correct? Yep, or correct. does it depend on the vessel? Always depends on the vessel. Okay. So if we go into our handy little toolkit here, yep. this oh. card here is minimum safety equipment requirements for personal watercraft and boats up to nine meters. Okay, don't go any further because I want to get into this coming up in the next segment and I don't want to run out of time talking about it. So back with Simon talking about the CPS and what it can do for you and improve your boat safety. And I didn't realize that you needed specific things for specific vessels. I kind of thought it was like a broad range. It makes sense, but it's not something that people would necessarily think about. So if I'm taking out a jet ski, do I need specific equipment? Yes. What do I need for a jet well, ski? You need at least one personal life-saving appliance. Makes sense. Be the per rider. So okay. if you have a three, if you have a three-seater, you need to have three. Three. Jackets, okay. Clearly, you need a you need a visual signal like a flashlight. Okay. Okay. You need uh, vessel safety equipment like uh, one manual propelling device. So like, like a, a paddle. A paddle. Where do you put a? Oh, I guess you can you fold can get, them. You can get collapsed. Yeah, the little ones. ones. They're, yeah. They're, well, they're not great, and you're not going to get any great distance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you need one anchor with at least 15 meters of cable. Okay. Okay. You need one uh, one baler or manual bilge. Pump. And this is just for a jet ski. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, may, you need some navigation equipment. You need one sound signaling device or appliance. Like a whistle. Or, or a whistle or one of those. Yeah. Um, you need navigation lights. They usually they always come on the vessel. And can you come like can you buy it all in a kit? So if I'm like at a boat store, a boating store, and I say, okay, well this is the size of my vessel. Does it all come in something like this, so you know you have everything instead of having to go through kind of the checklist? Yeah, there are retailers that will have that sort of equipment. Uh, yeah. I know for one of for my dinghy, which is a small little inflatable with a nine nine uh, Canadian Tire sells a orange. Like thing. a kit for it. And the, the actual kit itself is the baler. Oh, that's kind of cool. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Look at that saving space. Yeah. Now, um, what about like a 24-foot sailboat? This is where you would start to get well, into Well, yeah, more that's, and, that's like, where you need... You, well, what is this? That is a radar reflector. And since you are operating... If you are operating in <laughs> Hamilton Harbor, uh -huh. which is a navigational... Which is for commercial shipping. Yeah. You need to have one of those so the big ships can see you. Okay, so this just reflects off of their Yeah, rights. so you mount that up your mast yeah. if you have a sailboat. Right. And when the ship sends out its radar signals, the shape of this bounces that signal back and they know there's another vessel in front of them or behind them, depending on where you are. Huh. And what's this in the can? That is a, uh, that's a daytime uh, smoke flare. Oh. Marine distress signal. So Do not open. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not try it. <laughs> you guys want to see what this looks like on TV? <laughs> Marine distress signals. I've never even heard of that. Now, do you have to have one or the other? Like, do you have to have this or a flare? Yes. It, it depends on the... So once again, it depends on the size of the vessel. That is overkill for some of the smaller vessels. You don't necessarily need it, but it's Smoking nice to have. Smoking out the lake. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have. <laughs> okay, and a whistle, of course, that's yeah. always important. Okay, well, coming up, we're going to be talking about, you know, membership, how you can get involved, how you can volunteer if you're interested in working with these guys, and kind of how you can help the boating community and how important it is for you to get all of the safety information you need and just take some courses before you head out onto the water. Lots more coming up on Morning Live. Well, maybe, Simon, you can tell us a little bit about what the RVCC program is, what it entails. That's the Recreational Vessel Courtesy Check. Okay. So our volunteer members um, set up different times uh, during the summer. They'll come down. They have their little checklist. They'll go through your boat. They'll tell you what safety equipment you have, what you're missing. Hopefully nothing, but... <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you do. It's true. <laughs> um, and then they will, they will, if you pass, they will give you a little sticker you can put on the side of your boat. So if the police do come by, they see the stickers on there, and then they have a good idea that you've already been a responsible boat owner. Right. Gone ahead. They'll still probably check. They probably still will. So yeah. don't go taking off all your safety equipment inside. Right, I mean, like, well, I got the sticker. <laughs> it's like those yeah. people that put those, um, you know, security monitoring devices on their windows at home, and they actually don't have a security system. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Just to try and scare away right. the robber. Yeah. I get it. Um, now, all of this equipment that we've been talking about, all of it depends on the different 
different types of vessels. If I'm paying insurance for my boat, do I get like a discount or anything better because I have all of this safety equipment and certification? Yes, so with uh, a lot of insurance companies, um, they will give a 10% discount for the, More uh, certifications? For, well, if, as long as you, usually with the first course, if, as long as you pass our boating 2-3, mm -hmm. they will then say, there's the insurance discount. After that, uh, some might apply a little bit extra if you take more, others won't. I don't want to give any kind of right, false of course, leads. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then what you get is you get more navigate, you get more education. Okay. So piddling around in Hamilton Harbor, you really only need a PCOC. You want to go out on the lake, you want to learn about navigation. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to have an idea of what to expect when you're out there how to read paper charts, how to operate your And chart what about water. like the buoys and the different color of the markings and all that yep. kind of stuff? Because that's all very different than driving, yeah, obviously. Well, they're, they are road signs. Yeah. They will tell you um, which way to go, what side to go on, yeah. depending on the color and whether you're going upstream or downstream. And you will learn that in, as the courses kind of get as a little progress, bit more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then what if I wanted to go out like, you know, on the ocean or something? If I was driving to, you know, Halifax we, and wanted we, to throw my boat in. We have courses that go all the way up to celestial navigation, which will teach you how to read the stars and the sun to okay. give you your, permission, uh, your position out on the ocean. The stars and the sun? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. That's super neat. Okay, how do people get in touch with you guys if they want to join the program, if they want to volunteer with the program, or if they just feel like, oh, that's a really good idea. I might want to take some boat courses before um, I get out on the water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boatingcourses.ca okay. is a good place to start. Okay. Um, if you're looking uh, to be part of Niagara District, you can uh, look at our Niagara District Facebook page or just Google us and mm -hmm. it'll pop up. Amazing. Well, thanks for having us. We've learned a lot here today. And for more information, we'll have our socials up on our website. And I promise I will not do the air horn, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>